You could also just pause it real quick and then. Where's the handle? I mean, it works. I'll work with it. Uh, it doesn't say you're in the waiting room. I would have let you interview with her. I changed the battery then. With uh, good batteries? With good, I can say we're good batteries. It's going to hold it for a while. I'm holding it for a while. It's going to hold it for a while. Hey! Call this uh, regular council meeting to order. If I get a roll call, please. Colleen. Here. Bragdon. Here. Stanford. Here. Honor. Here. McEwen. Here. Helen here. Here. And Price. Here. You can all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And with that, uh, seeking uh, approval, the uh, oh, excuse me, there's the adjustments to the agenda edition, uh, order number 50, 2022. Uh, seeking approval of the minutes, March 10, 2022, regular meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilor Dorothy, by Councilor Dragon. All those in favor, Councilor Dragon. Aye. Councilor Gray. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McEwen. Aye. Chair Dooley. Aye. Councilor Medor. Aye. Councilor Peltier. Aye. Seven zero. Uh, seeing no special presentations, we'll go to the town manager's report. Good evening. Here we are. Good. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I, uh, I'll start by saying it's just it's really good to be here in person. Um, this is the first in person council meeting uh, uh, for me. It was in person for counselors last week, and I was, um, I was out at a class when I was in the hotel. So, this is a, a great experience for me uh, as my first in person meeting here uh, this evening. Uh, moving into my report here, uh, the FY23 budget is in, uh, you know, moving along nicely. Uh, we did complete this past week the uh, individual meetings with department heads to go over um, their first uh, drafts of, of, of their individual budgets. Uh, in the coming week, Mary Alice and I will be uh, completing the first draft of uh, the entire budget. And you know, I think we're really on track for where we need to be with that. Um, 
I do give a lot of credit to our department heads there. We have a great team at, um, at the Powerhouse Treasurer to kind of lead that pack in this process. I, I tell them all the time that I couldn't have, you know, I couldn't have done this at all without them. So uh, I look forward to bringing that to you in the next few weeks. Um, I did meet with Lorna on um, planning for rebal uh, of the properties uh, on the 17th. We are still waiting uh, for some responses to come back on that. Uh, for some of the key players that will that'll be helping that. Um, so I'm hoping that we can finalize that uh, for the April 14th meeting. Um, so I think that that will be coming to next as well. Uh, we do have the public meeting scheduled. The bike pet study, uh, the well, the presentation side of the bike pet uh, safety meeting that will be April 11th at 6 p.m. in the Sturgis Junior Senior High School uh, library. We will also have that available on Zoom for those who want to attend, uh, but are not comfortable or, or able to do that in person. Uh, so during that presentation, we'll see um, some of the data that was collected over the last. Um, some with, uh, with the main department of transportation and the uh, TY with the engineering firm. Uh, they'll go over some <clears throat> various suggestions on how we can adapt our Central Street corridor uh, to be more better situated for, for bicycle and pedestrian safety uh, amongst the traffic. Um, and they will show us some, some suggestions of how we can actually do that, you know, whether or not we change lanes or, or you know, move. Crosswalks. So we really do want to hear from the community that night. I hope that we do have uh, great attendance and feedback. Uh, this is something that we do not want to do top down. We, we really do want to understand uh, the questions and concerns because that's you know potentially very impactful to our community. Um, so I, I do hope to see uh, many citizens there uh, engaging and providing feedback for. Us. Um, we we have received an increasing number of complaints of, about property damage along Highland Avenue. Uh, the, the, the town owns land uh, due to some illegal parking that continues uh, in that area. And, you know, this time of year with the soft uh, soft ground, you know, as we head into spring, um, it's it's much easier to, to severely damage that property. Uh, so I have directed code enforcement officers to notify all property owners along that stretch of land um, and inform them that moving forward, we will, uh, we will be requesting the East Milwaukee Police Department to uh, issue tickets along, along that previous parking. Uh, so you know, hopefully we can get everybody on the same page there and uh, eliminate that. Or I know it's been an issue uh, for most of the winter and, and for you know three years years at this point. Can you pull the mic just a little bit closer? To sure. Uh, we did uh, hold a staff meeting uh, this last week and it was very productive. We uh, went over our we we went over the operating system upgrade. Uh, we did go to the SQL version of, of Trio uh, that has run fairly smoothly for uh, such a big upgrade. Uh, we went over hiring uh, outside contractors and how that is affected by uh, <coughs> workers' comp and liability insurance uh, when it comes to our own audit. So uh, we went over uh, procedurally what needs to happen when any department is hiring. Outside contracting to work on our property. Um, we also reinstituted the safety committee that was um, doing so well over this past year um, and heard from Chief Council regarding COVID masking updates uh, suggested for the town. Um, when it comes to that safety committee, um, we, we really are moving into a next tier of, of discount percentage and savings on that. I think it's going to be really impactful um, come 2023. Uh, Mr. Angani has done a lot of work uh, to get us where we are today for that. And I do think that um, I'll be able to implement the, the remaining pieces by August um, so that we may 
get that next year to get that. Uh, I believe that moves us from a 7% to a 10% range uh, discount on that. Um, and even further, you know, in the, in the past few years, I've been kind of looking at the data there, there's uh, a tremendous decrease um, in claims uh, in, that, in that area for the town. Um, you know, going from 2019, 2020, 2021, uh, we're seeing going from $260,000, $150,000 to $1,000. There's been some incredible progress made by our employees on, on really taking advantage and uh, taking control of their own safety at work. Um, I think that with the, with the largest chunk of that falling off um, for the next cycle, along with the increase in discount percentage, we're going to see really big savings on that in our next budget cycle. So I am very proud of our employees for that. Um, you know, that was work done by them, not by me. And, uh, they deserve all the credit on that. Uh, we did move to masking optional in town buildings um, Monday, 28th. Uh, and I have attached a memo in the meeting packet from uh, Chief Malcolm explaining how we got to that decision. Uh, we do have a meeting with Design Lab coming up next week to address some of the um, website updates that need to take place. And I, and I do, I did add a thanks in here to the community members who uh, reached out and helped me identify some of those uh, items, broken links and, and et cetera. Uh, looking to some upcoming um, council meetings, we will have a special presentation uh, at our April 14th meeting from the main water company. They will be here to um, address, present about, and take some questions on their um, kind of rate increase. Um, I did learn recently that you know there is a there is a rate increase coming with them. Uh, it's suggested at fourteen percent, um, and that there is um, um, there's a tax discounted rate that bring that down to a 6%. So it's not as high as it, as it looks uh, initially, but it, it is closer to 6% of total. Uh, most of the department updates I have in here are, are business as usual. Um, and that brings me to a point of, I, I will be moving uh, department updates from, um, from each meeting to a once monthly basis. I think that will be uh, certainly adequate for a lot of the information that's brought up. And if there's anything, uh, any sort of high level, it will be certainly included in my manager's report as well. Uh, I did want to point out because it's been brought up by counselors and a, um, a couple of community members that uh, in this meeting packet, we do have the monthly breakdown uh, associated with the general assistance report. That is some information that is kind of best gathered and put forward once a month. Uh, so we will continue to do that moving forward. Uh, we have seen more real estate um, tax payments rolling in. Uh, we are down to 383,000 uh, remaining unpaid for that. And we, we, we did um, share in our tax collector. She had um, taken the initiative to put out a, um, a nice informational letter through our social media and through our website um, to talk about the um, upcoming date for the 30 day notice. And that was actually very well received and uh, required a number of payments to come in. So, commend that effort on her part. Uh, and then also in the tax collector town clerk section here uh, is noted that they had received a second mailing from the Secretary of State uh, in preparation for the June 14th primaries uh, and that applications are now available for uh, requesting absentee ballots, uh, but the state printed ballots are not available at this time. Uh, 
I wanted to point out that in the fire ambulance section um, that um, Tom had mentioned here about um, checking with the main CDC on wastewater treatment, uh, wastewater treatment plants testing for COVID-19. Um, that is a program they are trying in selected communities. It was recently brought up um, by multiple people that the lock um, you know, may or may not have chosen not to participate in that program. Um, but I want to provide some clarity there. The lock was not asked to participate in that program. Um, our neighbors uh, just down the road, the lock did um, receive that request and are participating in that. Um, uh, Mr. Sherrod, our wastewater director, brought to my attention that you know, absolutely would have participated um, very willingly if, if invited. So just want to provide some clarity there. Um, and then he also mentioned working with um, Deb Roundtree at the Kataga Higher Ed Center. I wanted to talk about that for a second because that, that is uh, becoming a, a hub for education for um, EMS training. Uh, and that, that, that will very soon be offering some free training to our local community members to become certified in that field uh, and hopefully work locally to uh, try to really bolster that service in our area. We're, the, we're seeing a decrease in, in numbers of staffing uh, in that area. This is a great opportunity for um, somebody to further their education and get some good training on that to enter a you know, good career. Um, so that, that's a great program that's being put on by um, Eastern Maine Community College, and of course the Kentucky Higher Ed Center, and then uh, Tom and some of the other local departments and chiefs um, here in the, in the region. So great opportunity. Um, there were a few things on the police report I wanted to mention as well. Um, and the uh, topic of interest is usually the no lock calls versus total calls. Uh, so, you know, between March 7th and March 7th, March 20th, we're looking at 170 calls total uh, for Willanaka and 386 calls uh, between the three towns. So you can see where it's uh, more heavily weighted. I also wanted to point out that the second highest number on this report is associated to mental health and suicide threats. Um, it is, and you know, we talk about it constantly in this area that's become uh, more and more of an issue that needs to be um, addressed and, uh, you know, assisted. Um, there, there needs to be more focus on uh, the resources there so that we can work to, to help these people and, and Set them up to be better situated in their lives. Um, you know, and, and Chief McDonough also mentioned in here, uh, you know, you're seeing a large number of those calls, uh, mental health related. In the past few weeks, they've seen several times when uh, the emergency room at Milwaukee like Regional Hospital has been completely occupied by mental health um, patients. And he notes in here that Milwaukee no Regional Hospital should be commended for the work in, in recent months, um, juggling that going on um, at higher numbers here in the community, along with uh, you know what they do in, in their regular lines of work there. Um, so much kudos to them, and <laughs> just looking to continue bringing attention to uh, mental health needs in our in our region, but. That will conclude my manager's report for tonight. Uh, I look forward to any feedback or questions from the council community. Thank you very much, Mr. Manager. Um, one thing to add to that, I uh, would like to get some council feedback on the uh, Heritage Park discussion, which we've been meeting fairly regularly, um, business owners and others involved uh, with the progress. Uh, basically planning what that property would be. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's that empty lot at the end of the corner of Central and Penobscot. Um, they had uh, requested to hear from the town 
on uh, whether or not our bathrooms in this building would be available at certain hours for that park. Um, the uh, bathrooms that I think they're referencing are the ones in the basement with the police department. Um, I have my own concerns about that, um, but wanted to at least pose that since it was discussed um, and see what your thoughts are on that issue. And with that, any uh, council comments on management support? Come to call here. Um, first of all, I think the uh, site is complete before uh, I do agree with your proposed change to the monthly reporting of our departments. Um, we no longer order on the parents to tell to us and uh, request that we file for intervening side of the to hear some feedback on that. Uh, and regarding the use of the municipal building, I really don't think it's a place for the for the town for myself to be more accessible and then, and then we change the hours that we have to you know, maintain the building that can. Thank you. Thank you, Council Peltier. Any other council comments from manager of the board? Council McEwen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A um, couple of points on the public bathroom, just to read from the last one. Um, I'm in agreement with Council Peltier. I think if it's not open for the general public, anyways, just for allowing just the park, it's going to open up it to the entire public through that point. So I think it will be a little bit more complex and management have to do with as well. Um, on Highland Avenue, good to see that there's some action finally starting to happen there. Um, there's been a number of years where it's ended up just like this. As we can see in the past couple of days, um, it's a very repetitive issue. And the owner in question, uh, maybe there might be multiple ones, but the owner that is there that very proximate to that issue um, is well aware that it's been an issue and it's just taken no action because we haven't done anything about it. So hopefully that will clear up a bit too. Um, intervener status, I think we've done that before, at least um, I think we should do that again. That is quite a height. Um, and um, is there anything else you're looking for in the park specifically? Okay, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Council McEwen. Council McGuire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to uh, first touch on the municipal building, the, I'm concerned about the liability issue of uh, allowing those bathrooms to be used because you have to go downstairs uh, to use them. And it is a confined area with a very limited uh, View for anybody to see whether or not somebody gets hurt. So I would have, I would have to say that I would be opposed to using those bathrooms for that reason. Um, the um, the property up on Highland Avenue, we've been dealing with this for more than a decade now, and um, no matter what we've imposed or what we've asked, we still have a problem with the plowing. We still have a problem with the parking, and now with DMVs being up there and people coming with snow sled trailers and that and parking on the soft lawn, what it's doing is it's creating damage that the town then is responsible for uh, repairing year after year after year. I, I think it's gotten to the point now where we don't, citations have to be issued. Uh, property, people who own property up there have been told on more than one occasion, you cannot do this. And yet they continue to do it in in the face of the municipality. So I, I think it's time now that all the warnings, all the discussions, all the everything else is over and done with now. I think it's now time to start levying the fines. And if you are responsible for having a uh, a PMB or any other type of uh, overnight stay. You should be responsible for providing the parking area for the vehicle or vehicles that would be your clientele to give them an area and not assume that they can park on municipal property with it. And I, I think that's part of it. You, you wouldn't expect people who own uh, Pomola or 
or if you're tied in or some of these other places that allow people to park on the medium in, in the middle of uh, Central and Sycamore because after all, it's fine as municipal parking over there, go ahead and park your trailer. So it's the same idea there. These people are deriving an income. They are facilitating a business. They need to be able to provide the, the facilities necessary for their people that are staying there to take care of and not have it on town property. Um, I would like to see people ticketed. I would like to see people fined. I'm tired of it. Um, as far as the uh, street lights uh, on the, I see that the uh, both intersections repairing the uh, bottom on both sections. Are we still looking, or is public work still looking for a uh, installing a camera on the uh, central and Sycamore by McDonald's to uh, take care of that problem? Because it, it, Ralph had mentioned it in the previous uh, time up here, uh, camera problem. And we'd like to have a second camera put up there to alleviate that light problem, uh, make it more efficient. And I'm wondering if that's still, uh, that camera is still on the uh, radar for installation with the DOT on that section, on that intersection. Um, yes, we have a couple of movement coming up for this, uh, this year. To be, should be this summer. Okay. Uh, I also noticed the transfer station, we have a person out, and is that a short-term or long-term uh, loss of a, a person out at the transfer site? Do you, have you any idea? I am not aware of the exact amount of time, but it, I would say short-term. Um, we do have a, we do have a posting out for a temporary position to go to the spot while they are out. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the, um, the interviews, um, the human resource director under the uh, scheduling interviews for the CID director's position. Um, where do you, do you have a timeline, Mr. Manager, on those uh, interviews and, and where are we? Uh, we are scheduled to complete our final interview uh, tomorrow morning and hope to make an offer the following. Good. Yeah. Very good. That's I'm good. Very, very impressed with the candidate so far. Um, I think. Either that we are interviewing will we'll do well, and that will be a tough decision to make. I follow you. That doesn't happen very often. That's usually, 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 you can call me. Um, under um, one of the things that uh, I was noticing under the uh, uh, the tax collector and uh, is the, uh, the preparation of efforts with citizen inquiries uh, for initiating a recall petition. Uh, recently in the uh, Lincoln News and that we have had uh, an article or whatever that has come out as far as recall is concerned. What I would, and I only want to make this as more of a statement rather than a question, but um, we as a council, uh, as, a, as a dais, have taken no, um, or, or instructed no one, taken no stance to uh, try to uh, tell the school board how to conduct their meetings or how to uh, facilitate their functions. Uh, what a member of the council does as a private citizen that is as a private citizen. And it is not the dais, nor is it through uh, an action of the council or anything to speak or have it presumed that that person is speaking for the council. And I'd like to make that very clear because I think that gets kind of muddy sometimes. Uh, you, you, you know, any one of us can go out and we have a right for taxpayers in the community to go to a meeting or whatever and voice a concern or whatever. But what is very, has to be made very clear is they are going as a private citizen and not under the direction or, or representation of the council as a whole. So we have not gone ahead and taken any uh, position whatsoever 
as far as uh, how the school board conducts their meetings or whatever. So I just want to make that crystal clear for people going forward because I think it was, I think the, the article in the, the link to news kind of muddied the water a little bit on that one. Uh, actually, muddied the water a lot on that one. Um, what I wish the, the, from the police department, if it could possibly happen, is I see the talking about the fact that the emergency room is full of people with mental health issues. And I see this as a reoccurring theme, you know, meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting on these reports. But I've never seen to be able to get a definitive answer of how many of these cases are, are repeats. It is, if we have, I just wish I knew how many people in the community or the surrounding area are having a perpetual problem. I don't need their names. I just need to know whether they're repeat. Is this repeat still happening in the hospital? Is this new? Is it building? I, I just would like more information on that number and those situations to better understand the whole uh, crisis, I guess would be a good word for it, moving forward. I, I, I think in a situation like that, you cannot have enough data. Uh, to fully understand and fully appreciate the the gravity of the situation, and I would like, hope, would like to get some more data on that moving forward, so that we could be more informed and have better decision making as far as maybe options that we can exercise as a as a community. Um, with that being said, um, I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman Or Any other comments, Councilman Danforth? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to respond to a couple of my doors uh, questions after I get the first two easy ones here. So, as far as the public bathrooms, I'm um, in agreement with the other councils that I've spoken. I think we need another alternative than the basement or the municipal building. So, whatever those options are, we need to be explored. Um, as far as the manager's report, I'm glad you're meeting with Design Lab. There's some updates to the website that are needed, and um, I have a couple different suggestions too, so I don't think I'll share them with you. <coughs> when I look at the age friendly site and some of the resources that we have to share and stuff, so perhaps we wouldn't have that meeting when the 20 bucks to even touch base. Um, around, I appreciate, um, Mr. Manager, too, that you are highlighting, um, you know, within the police report and the fact that mental health. We are our community, there's community numbers in crisis. And in turn, it puts the hospital in crisis. Um, I actually took a screenshot of the report that was in here where the police departments were, you know, commending the emergency room staff for handling the situation stuff, just to show that um, their hard work, what they're doing is really appreciated. Um, I'm working with um, Bob Peterson, and I'm sure he would be willing to join a meeting at some point to put some data together because we need to go after some funding for an expansion of the emergency department. Currently, have five days, five um, we can't need more. So they are exploring and looking at a concept design to try to find funding to actually increase capacity um, to handle situations that are happening there. So. I'm sure data could be shared and we could reach out to Bob Peterson around that. Um, but there is a need here, and when you mentioned like we need data so we know how to handle it. I know um, folks in our recovery community and just in the community in general um, are asking us to support whatever help we can get around treatment, prevention, substance disorder, mental health, and not both the same thing. A lot of times they co occur, but they're two separate health issues. Um, so we do need to look at that as a municipality, and I'm trying to work on that, and I would like to bring resources to the council and to the community. That's something I'm very passionate about. And along that line, um, it's now is the time to get our data together, get our um, facts, our stories, our whatever it is that we might look to do, because there's funding available, there's lots of funding available. I know um, just from the county, um, from the Penobscot County Commissioners, there are the ACA funds that are available, Application for the CD, I remember this is the 14th or the 15th of April. We need to be on top of that. Um, so, many good points are being made, and we absolutely need to be looking at it, paying attention. 
and what to our community for resources and for some of the answers going forward. So, with that, thank you. Thank you, Madam Davenport. Councilor Frank. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, on the, uh, the topic of uh, whether or not we have uh, addressed the uh, need of restrooms or something to the potential park, um, that property abuts two commercial pieces of property that, and there's a sewer line, um, I believe, acceptable areas where they can hook into uh, the existing lines on that facility. Uh, obviously, you don't want that any type of facility in the middle of that to park this way, but maybe off the edge, they might want to consider looking as to what the expenses might be. Uh, as I forwarded to the uh, members of the uh, of the uh, park group, the scenic byway group, uh, the, the feds are expanding their expenditures, expenditures on that uh, for additional funding for projects. That might be a project that they could build there, similar to what they have on the highway systems. On the interstate systems, which are pretty much designed so you can hose them down and clean them up, and not a lot, of, not a lot of work into maintenance and, and securing them. Uh, that would either put them adjacent to a, a building wall that would uh, provide additional um, protection from the extreme cold in the winter time and stuff like that. Uh, I think that, that that group should also look at that, and because the chairman knows I'm one of the participants. In so most of those calls are the way, um, but I think that that's an option that should be looked at uh, versus having the town do it. And of course, when they proposed making that park in the first place, they always said they were going to build it and then turn it over to the town, so it would be eventually our expense anyway. But if we're, if we're going to be a community that provides uh, have events downtown, do promotions, and have activities, we've got to have facilities for the general public to use. Uh, and of course, we don't have the number of businesses that we used to have in the old days or sometimes invited anybody anyway off the street to use it. And, and of course, during those big things, most businesses do open up their facilities to uh, people who are visiting the community. Uh, so I think that's something that needs to develop a little further along from that, from their perspective. Um, in reference to the uh, bicycle uh, study group, you said the meeting's going to be at the library. <clears throat> the high school library. High school library. Okay, thank you. Because uh, I was going to say, I think that's a little, no, no large space up there. From some of the comments that I got when they were up and people were running some of the posts and stuff over, I, I'm hoping we get a good turnout. People really become informed. Just to, I think there was a lot of people that didn't know what was going on and reacted in a negative way. Where we're trying to go. In reference to uh, Forest Ever, um, as those who are on the council, the return comes from the board, I'm not sure if anybody else has. We have discussed this before. I went up and several years ago and took a series of pictures of the mount, the chunks of asphalt that had been plowed out into that field. Uh, huge ruts and, and, uh, and uh, Ralph, uh, of course, the architect has gone up and had to do a lot of repair work along those streets up there from what had happened. Um, I would like to understand a little bit better what the can that the code enforcement officer be given the authority to write citations. We've always had problems, even when we had a police department, of having a police department wanting to do that. But to go up and ticket vehicles or, or cite vehicles and basically let them know that the official citation that that's a violation of law and there's a penalty for that. And as Councilor Maduro said, we need to back off of this, just give them warnings. We need to start citing people, we need to start picketing for violations, and we need to start collecting uh, for violations because of that property. In addition to the problem that does on Forest Avenue that pushes that snow to the back, which then goes down to those houses on Camacho Avenue in the spring runoff. So it's more than just the damages that are being done up on, on Forest. Uh, I get where I am sometimes. <laughs> Trying to get where I fall. Um, and of course, that is part of the discussion that came up when we were talking about short term rentals and, and some of those that are, have commercialized that conference up there. Um, to, the, uh, to the water company, 
I had written this when I first got my letter in the mail about the increase, and I didn't. I had written it, wanted to bring up that I wanted the town to come to file as an intervener. In that notice they gave us, they said they've done from 2011 to 2021, uh, they have done $2 million worth of repairs. We pay them about 400 and some grand a year. Plus, if you look at that, there's also a, in that billing, there's a fee for infrastructural improvements and it's paying for that. So, in addition to the rate, there's a fee that's assessed to keep that property up. So, I'd like to see the real hardcore numbers of the wall company come to make a presentation to us of why they need this rate increase or, or for us to file as an intervener uh, raising objections to what their rate increase is about seeing without them opening up their whole books and showing us uh, what they're making. That's just what the town pays. Every single citizen in this town pays additional to what we do, pay for a fire hydrant that really is only using water when it's tapped or when it's used, but we're paying these prices. Uh, so I can imagine what the rest of the total billing for the residents of Mill Market is. Um, I'd like to uh, thank Tom. Thank all department heads for their report, but uh, now that we're getting near the end of the uh, mandated mask and going to optional masks and so forth, uh, for his diligence in following the CDC uh, and advising this council on various occasions when uh, we've been asked to lift the mandates and stuff like that. At least we're addressing those problems and trying to keep uh, uh, people safe. We'll never know how many cases may have been prevented, but uh, I assume there are some. Um, and also to uh, some of the postings such as that of the bicycle path on the uh, town website, I've noticed some people have asked questions, which we've raised a dozen times in advance of the council meetings as to what the costs are, what the town has spent. But I, I think we do need to respond when it's when the question is asked is no funds, this amount of funds, just just the facts as to what it is. Because when it, I had one person said that they'd seen that, it's been there for a couple of days, and I said, I've only been there for a day, day and a half, and I haven't been there for several days um, as to what those costs were. But we need to, as we meet with design lab, some of those questions need to be answered up front, and it prevents the rumors of going all the time that, that the council is spending millions of dollars. We are, but not wasteful like that. Um, a couple of questions about comments I had already been answered uh, or been asked by other councillors. Um, the uh, reference to the town uh, to the town trade uh, work on uh, and the town clerk's office. Of notifying us of what the status is on on the accounts outstanding the means of I just want to kind of give a perspective of that. Um, as was given in our crown report uh, that um, we've received this a fair amount of people paying up, but that's only 12.3 percent of the outstanding balance. We still have 87.68 percent of what the means were last time they were reported to us, but we still have a long ways. To go to get that up, and I'm hoping that as people see other people paying, that they contact the town manager and either make uh, uh, work on a detailed a detail plan as to how they can catch up on back taxes or whatnot, so that uh, these properties don't get taken after the lien process is completed. Um, on the overall accounts, uh, on the uh, um, uh, on the other you know, second account on there, the lien summary of going down from 19,000 to 14,000, that's 23% paid and still 77% balance that's out there and that needs to be collected. It's unpaid and in a lien status. So we still have a, a long ways to go from those who have uh, liens uh, being filed against them. To the police report, and I raised this up last time. I appreciate all the work that they're doing. This is not criticism, it's just a recognition of what they're reporting on. Uh, for example, from the March 7th to the 20th, uh, they, they talked about uh, the total number of calls that they had is 386, of which Milwaukee was 170 of them. That's 44% of the calls that's out there. 
And as I pointed out, we're 59.8% of the combined population of the three towns. So we're not, and, and while the other ones are lower percentages, they are actually taking up uh, more than their per personal uh, number of calls or being responded to by the police department. Um, and, and to the uh, department, the total department, where they talked about 778 calls for the month of February, no, uh, no line that represented 42.67% of the calls. And we are, as I said, uh, the four uh, 50 some percent of the population. Um, we are 59% of the population. So ratio wise, we're not doing that bad, too bad. I noticed that here that the UT is covered. I would assume that they come to our other call areas. Do they get reimbursement from the county on doing calls to the unorganized territory? Other than Dolby, the only other, other unorganized territory I think they would cover would be up here, Smith Pond, and those other areas. I'm just hoping the county's paying something into if they're doing calls. Could you just check on that? Well, sure. Are you, we're still talking about the police department, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I can, I can look into that. I imagine so. Generally, those contracts. Well, I just saw the numbers and it said other areas covered, other covered areas, but they just the town. So I, I don't know where, what that other covered area is they covered. It also could be, you know, <clears throat> throughout Medway and a lot of the Grand Stone Road and that way, also an organized territory could, could be you know, either direction, but I can look into that. That's it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your report. Appreciate all the departments. Thank you, Officer. Mr. Manager, did you want to respond earlier? I just wanted to uh, provide one point of clarity that the, um, the installation of those posts throughout the town um, uh, was actually the Bicycle Coalition of Maine. It's a, it's a different, uh, completely separate project from uh, the bike pen study, um, bicycle pedestrian safety. Um, so that, that will be addressed at the public meeting as well. Um, and then I, I, I really just wanted to um, use that opportunity to, you know, in that, in that same bicycle pedestrian safety um, area, um, the the students, uh, the, the the youth committee, they was it was it uh, Jen Council Danforth? Maybe you could uh, expand on that a little bit more. But uh, the survey they have put out that's right in line with the project that we're yeah, um, I know Kyle Leathers, um, some of the youth and his leadership class um, put out a study around bike safety and something they're interested in. Um, not specific to the youth committee, but it was specific to his class. Um, over the, and I'm going to say, well, Adam's the middle school, high school. I don't know if there's anybody listening in that can clarify or not. So I'm feeling bad. I don't want to give um, wrong information, but it was. Um, it was an eighth grade uh, project. Yeah. Council Craig, you completed. Thanks. Any other council comments? Council Dragon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a couple of points. The Heritage Plaza bathroom situation. I'm in agreement. I, I'm not comfortable with uh, with that. I, I agree with what Council Medora said. If something happens down there. Um, the police have already stated they're not down there all the time, so something could happen, um, and we may not know about it, which is a huge liability. And to me, that's a huge liability. Um, second, the monthly reporting, great, I love it. Um, intervening main water, I think it's a great idea. I'd like to know more. Um, I'm still new to this whole thing, so I'm trying to you know figure out parts of this. I would definitely be interested in weighing more on uh, the Highland Ave situation. Having worked up there, this is been a recurring issue consecutively for years. Um, I had spoken to some people that live up on the street, um, including the email that I sent you all with the photos of the damage, and um, my parents, which live up there, and some older people, including some neighbors that I used to live beside. And they're pretty much all on the same page. You know, they, they know who it's coming from. They all are in agreement that uh, there is a huge issue, not only with that, but with snowmobiling up and down that park and on the properties of the owners. Uh, if you go up there, there is a bunch of orange cones laid out right before the curve on the property owners' houses because they are parking on their property and they're driving their snowmobiles on property owners' uh, land. So it is a huge problem. Uh, 
And some recommendations were made from the people that are out there, and I told them that I'd bring it to the council tonight. Um, there is a lot of people out there that like to walk their dogs in that park. And some people had recommended that that be turned into a dog park. And in past council meetings, we have talked about putting a fence up along that, um, which obviously would probably really be really costly. Um, but I had taken some photos up there myself, and there is a uh, road guard uh, to turn to the what's that roundabout called that goes to East Terrace? I know where you're talking. Yeah. So there is a road guard there along the curb, and if we were to line a big portion of the roads with those and leave some openings along the way, uh, that would solve the issue of people parking because they obviously wouldn't be able to get past that. <clears throat> Um, so there were some recommendations on turning that into a, a dog park um, and putting a fence up or some road guards. Uh, just an idea, obviously, like I said, I was going to bring it to you because it was recommended to me and I told them I would. Um, last point is there has been some comments about the sound quality. Just a reminder to, to talk directly into your microphone. The people on Zoom can't hear you nearly as well as the people here in the chamber. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Dodd. Any other council comments? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to the uh, intervener of the on the water issue, uh, the last time the uh, Public Utilities Commission came up here in this chamber and uh, on the rate height, uh, they had meetings up here. Uh, we applied for intervener status. We testified during the public uh, comment section of that meeting. Uh, at that time, uh, the, the water company was asking for a rate hike, and the reasoning for it was the fact that people weren't using enough water. So there, because the volume of water that they had at one time had uh, going into the mill had dropped significantly, and people in town were trying to be conservative with water, you know, reduce water uh, toilets in their houses and things like that. Their reasoning was they had to get a rate hike because people weren't using enough water to justify the expense of operating the water company here. And believe it or not, the PUC bought it and uh, allowed them to have a, a very high, I believe that one was 17% height that time around. So uh, I'm wondering if, if uh, the Public Utilities Commission is planning on having something if, if there's a, usually if there is a request for a rate hike like that, usually a public hearing within the community happens so that the people within the community can come to the meeting and testify to address the issue so the PUC gets a better idea of what's going on. Uh, I would think that we could uh, request a uh, meeting with the PUC to address this rate hike before it goes into effect. Uh, and as well as uh, filing uh, letters for intervener status. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman Dorr, Mr. Manager. Uh, I believe the deadline for filing intervener status is April 1st. So if that is a collective um, decision, that, that you would like me to pursue that, I would need that sooner than later. Can I get a spot poll on that? Mm -hmm. Councilor Bragg? I just want to make it clear that it should go to the Public Advocates Office as well. Thank you, Councilor Bragg. I are just going to raise a hand on that straw poll. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anyone in the public want to just comment on that specifically before we uh, send that in? Okay, thank you. Um, a lot of my thoughts on the uh, rounder support here. I also agree with what's been said about the bathrooms. The uh, Heritage Plaza was planning on also putting on events that would go well beyond uh, the hours of operation of the town hall. So to have people come in at 9, 10 at night um, without any uh, staff here and obviously additional maintenance uh, included in that, I, I don't think it's a good idea. The bathrooms are also down in the basement, so uh, accessibility for some people might be difficult. <coughs> excuse me, difficult. Um, and then we'd also have to open up the elevators as well. Um, so there is there's quite a bit of issue that I see with that. So I will relay uh, what's been said here. 
Um, I also agree with the uh, mental health issues in the community. Um, I hear it also from uh, uh, fire and EMS services um, of bringing patients there, and, and they can oftentimes uh, also be dealing with very, very difficult things while riding in an ambulance. I'll just leave it at that. Um, there's a lot of people all across the board throughout the town, whether it's police, fire, EMS, and the hospital um, that are all picking up a lot of slack here. Um, as Councilor Danforth mentioned, there are resources out there. Um, and uh, I think the new CIG position should certainly uh, focus on this almost immediately as, as some of these requests for funds will be open. Uh, also to Council Gray's point on a previous meeting, um, it is very difficult for our limited amount of funds with ARPA to address some of these larger issues in town. Um, the state, the county, uh, and even the federal government, uh, in my view, are, are the bodies that we should be petitioning to get um, to get these funds here uh, for not only our town, but also for the region as well. Um, Councilor Bragdon, you brought up the possibility of a dog park there. Um, I just uh, made me remember there's a contractor that works for me and he's actually interested in building a dog park here for free if the town just pays for the materials. Uh, that'll be discussed at the next sustainability meeting. I want to let you all know about that. There are a couple of places in town that are almost closed in, um, such as at the, uh, the park over in Little Italy, um, and also another property uh, on our uh, site that uh, all it would take is one strip of fencing to close it in. Hillcrest Playground as well. Uh, so we'll be looking at all those opportunities, but I just want to raise that while you mentioned it. Um, in addition to the citations of what people might get for um, violating our code in terms of parking, if there is damage to the property, I am curious to know what our ability is to also charge for the damage. Um, if, if roads are ripped up or other things need to be repaired, or even if we need, you know, if we need to put up fencing, that, that is a cost to the town. Um, I would want to know if, if we can charge for those repairs as well. Um, and lastly, um, as you mentioned, Mr. Manager, the staff uh, of the town have been working extremely diligently at lowering the cost to the taxpayers. I just want to say thank you to the staff um, who certainly take their jobs as their life. Uh, they put everything into it. and just want to say thank you to all the staff. And with that, any uh, public comment on the manager of the board? Mr. Dumais? Jesse Dumais, and some of the on today. Thank you, Council, for uh, hearing us out. Uh, I'm going to go just a couple points over and talk about um, some more important than others. Uh, I have written down and was going to suggest also some form of barrier on Highland Avenue if we're dealing with the same issues year in and year out with the same people year in and year out, then I think it would be advantageous for us to uh, put up some kind of barrier. Um, we've spent money on other items that are less frivolous than that. So I think that that would be a one-time cost that would last on a bit for a long time. Uh, proposed plans for, um, we call it Heritage Park. We call it Puppy Park. Thus, <laughs> 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 we already have a Puppy Park. As a matter of fact, it's gonna be interesting to see what the cleanup is gonna be over there when the snow melts. But um, back when I was on the council in 2000, 16, 17, I believe that was supposed to be addressed back then. I don't know what kind of monument or anything is happening or what's coming down the road or who's abandoned what. I don't know. I know I've been on a loop for a couple of years, so it'd be kind of interesting to see what the plans are for the park. Um, but yeah, you guys shouldn't let people use the bathroom. That's going to be hard to keep passed out everywhere. Um, thirdly, and most importantly, so the, the, the I'm very passionate about as well is the mental health from somebody that suffers from PTSD and, and uh, depression um, been treated for, continue to be treated. It is something that uh, us as a town need to look at seriously. 
especially over the past couple of years with COVID and the restrictions and the mandates, it is undeniable that it's exacerbated the situations for people. And I was very passionate when through mental health professionals, through no fault of their own, although everybody has to make choices of where they're employed at, Illinois has suffered a lot when it comes to um, like Diamond Valley Health Clinic, you know, sure up to the hospital where we just don't have the clientele or the people available that can provide us other than Zoom meetings. And I don't know if anybody's ever seen a therapist through a Zoom meeting, it is not a human to human contact something that we've created ourselves. I understand this thing. I understand the distancing. I understand all that. And I understand be safe, vaccinate, make your own personal choice for your safety. But we kind of created this ourselves a little bit. So I'm very happy to see that it's gone to optional because things should be optional. Free Americans should be optional. Um, with the mental health, and the lack of therapists and the last is lack of social workers here in town that can help us out, people are turning to drugs and alcohol. And you know this, it's not a secret. When depressed people, people that are hurting, have no help, they seek ways to, and I'm not a professional, I'm just, I'm just a human. I'm not a biologist, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a human that knows myself and knows other humans. So I feel pretty comfortable in saying that when we suffer, we don't want to suffer anymore. The way to do that is to escape. Drugs and alcohol do that to people. We're dying. People are dying in our own. People are dying all over the place because of drug and alcohol. Mental health is the root cause of that, my belief, which causes um, addiction. Addiction to, to a lot of things. Anyways. Not to harp on that too much, but I'm, I'm glad to see that we're getting back to normal. It's good to see people's faces again. Um, glad to see everybody back. But uh, yeah, let's try to take care of some of these things. Good to have you guys. Thank you very much, Mr. Good. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jimmy Biss, 32 Forest Avenue. Chairman, Mr. Manager, Council, nice to be back. Um, yeah, just a couple of things to touch on here. I agree with Council on, on the individual status on the on, on water company. We did it for a uh, long time years ago. It was <clears throat> the question I would have is uh, um, has the PUC ever refused rate increase? Um, you know, <laughs> so that's I don't know where this is going to go, but I don't think their history is uh, very good. Uh, the other thing is, is because uh, I won't be here on the, on the flight pedestrian safety meeting you're having in April. Uh, we're all going on vacation. <laughs> um, but anyways. I just, you know, after what we saw last fall, this is, that was phase one. And, Catastrophe that was. Uh, we had an obstacle course in that created more of a hazard than, than it was worth. Uh, I certainly don't want to spend taxpayer money looking for a, a solution to the problem. I don't think we have. Uh, I certainly don't trust the flight coalition. I think they want to turn us into a Portland. We don't want to be a Portland. You go down to Portland area and the bikes are taking over the roads and you have to stay four feet away from them. And uh, some of the most arrogant people I ever saw was down there were trying to drive around. These, these are way right, right away to here for, for vehicles and not for bikes. And they're set up that way, and that's the way it should be. Uh, I think you're, you're going to end up creating a problem if you take their recommendations. But I wish I was here for that meeting, but uh, I'm certain I won't be. Um, the other thing is that as you're starting to get into budgets, um, you know, I, we all know people are struggling. I mean, all across the country, inflation is through the roof, uh, energy costs are through the roof, food prices just every day. I mean, there's just no end to it. People are struggling. Here locally, we know in the last six years, the taxes have gone up. Uh, mill rates were on the highest. Uh, you raised valuation last year, it take more money out of people's pocket. Uh, you know, the warning signs are there. I just heard that now property taxes are still over $300,000 they haven't collected. 
you got pain going out, you got pain going out of the wastewater. I mean, it's an indication people are struggling. They're having a hard time paying the bills, and it's not time to raise the taxes again. Um, we look at, you gotta look, can't just look at the municipal budget, you gotta look at the school. For the first time, I'm uh, hearing now the school budget's over 50%, 52, 55%. It was never over 50% in all the years I served. On the so that's an area you gotta look at. I mean, school population going down, of course, the answer would be certainly uh, the big one school can all consolidation talks. That's, that's something that needs to move forward and need to be, we need to go over there again. Um, that's basically all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beck. And Mr. Randy, do you know if that bike had uh, safety presentation value for materials for that be available before the meeting? Um, I don't know. Uh, we can possibly make that available. Can we do you know? I know they have the draft prepared and we do have a meeting next week to go over it, so we can check with them. I think there will be materials that we ahead of time. Well, Mr. Bisk, if you or others uh, want to review that, if you'll be out of town, feel free to post it on the face or in the uh, town website okay. so you can review that and submit comments okay. if you can't make it in person. We also, um, that'll be available via Zoom if you do want to log in that way. Uh, View the presentation and provide feedback. Um, that was, uh, I believe, a zero cost to the town. Just to clarify, that was all uh, funded by outside resources. Um, and then, just for one more point of clarification, um, the bicycle coalition study that was done last summer is a completely separate thing from this bicycle um, and pedestrian safety. I just wanted to. Clarify those two differences so it is a different uh, project altogether. Uh, but we do appreciate that that feedback. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Excuse me, I would like to follow up on that. So the Bicycle Coalition of Maine actually came here because the H Funding Committee invited them to participate. In, they have a demonstration project called Imagine People Here. And I mean, we've had tons of feedback, but it did exactly what we hoped it would. It created some awareness about the speed factor down Central Street. And so um, there's a part two of that. We won't be putting everything exactly the same up, but we might be painting um, the um, crosswalks and doing um, phase two of that. So the community can be aware um, that we're going to take feedback from phase one and do it again, but that is separate from the, the study that we're doing with the DOT. But it informs the study. So we're just creating awareness, we're getting feedback, it did what it intended to do. So thank you. Mr. Bisk, you got a follow up? Can I just touch up on this? Sure. <clears throat> I just want to say that, you know, I walk probably more than most people. I'm, I try to walk every day, I walk down these sidewalks, I, go, I walk all over town. And again, you know, the, side, uh, the crosswalks are where they belong, they get uh, repainted every summer. I just hope that I, I get it to see uh, looking for a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Um, I hope that you're not making things worse by uh, where you're going now. But again, you know, I won't be here, so I, I wish I, I was so I can. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. Sandra? Hi, Sandy Sullivan, 104 Sunset Drive. I am thrilled to hear that there will be some training. Uh, for EMS services. Hopefully that will help with the drain we seem to have with all of our EMS people. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Any other comments from the public? Oh, yes, Chief Malcolm. I'm Malcolm, 73 School Street. I just urge the public to come out on April 11th and see the plan. There's been so many rumors going around about what we're going to do with this plan. This, this whole idea is to make it safer in this community. It's not about uh, crosswalks or bicycles. It's, it's how to make things safe. We all know that that Central Street corridor is, a game, is dangerous. There's no doubt about it. So I just urge everybody. Please come on the 11th and that, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for 
what the community thinks, what the community wants. The community can set there and say, so if you want to do all this, but it's up to the community to come up and tell us what they think. Thank you. Uh, Hi, Susan D'Alessandro, 126 State Street, Millinocket. Um, I just wanted to thank you all again for being um, not only transparent, but accessible and responsive. And that ex the first example is the um, expanded report about general assistance. And I really do appreciate that. And also, our police department has all along really given very good detailed reports that help to inform people. So often people don't really understand any of the issues because they don't have the information. <clears throat> so I'm really thankful to them too for their report. And I um, very much agree with what Jesse Dumay said. And I'm very happy to hear the council also being very responsive about the mental health issues in town. And as Jesse pointed out, quite often mental illness and substance use go hand in hand and they're very big problems. And I'm glad to see some attention is given to trying to deal with this issue. And I'm also um, very happy to hear the discussion about the water situation. And I have um, attended a couple of the sustainability meetings where not only the cost, but the quality of the water that we have, I think sometimes can be in question. So I think a focus on the water department is very appreciated by a lot of people. And as far as the dog park, um, some of you know that a group of us, <clears throat> excuse me, have gotten together and um, informally trying to deal with that. So um, I would love to hear more information about what the town has in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, and we'll be talking more about that dog park at the sustainability meeting uh, coming up. So if you want to participate in that, feel free to do so. I believe it's Wednesday the 9th at 9 a.m. at the library and Zoom. Council Belzier, did you have a public comment? Yeah, we'll lose those here. 22 Congress Street. It was for the chief problem state and in response to Mr. Biss about to a large population of the uh, Milwaukee pedestrian users do not find Central Street to be safe or accessible. Thank you, Louie. Any other public comment? I've got one myself, so hang on a second. <laughs> I appreciate the recognition. Uh, Steve Gooley, Beat High Street. I uh, just want to respond and, and appreciate Councilor Medour's uh, point uh, regarding the school uh, issue and discussion. Um, I just want to remind the public that uh, the recall process is a, a, a public initiative of the citizens. The town manager, the council uh, have absolutely no involvement with that process. Um, I just want to make that very clear. The council only gets involved if the petition itself is successful and there needs to be uh, elections. That's the only time that the council gets involved. Um, as a parent of two kids who went to Granite Street, I am very happy with the teachers that they have there. My kids absolutely love them. Um, I wish they were still here loving my teachers over there, but uh, that's another story. Um, but I just want to make that point very clear. I have uh, attended school board meetings and voiced my personal opinion as a private resident of the town who has children, who has experience uh, going to school board meetings and have concerns. They are not on behalf of the council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cole. I 
the guy had a weird voice. Uh, <laughs> any other public comments? Seeing none. That moves us to unfinished business. Uh, Councilor Peltier, if I could have to read order number 35 2022, please. I'll start order number 35 2022, providing for approval of application of reappointment to the Board of Appeals. It is ordered that the Milwaukee Town Council approve the reappointment of Charles Surrounding to the Board of Appeals for a three year term to expire March 2025. No child application was received February 2022. I'm currently holding a seat on the Board of Appeals that was by the March 31st, 2022. Second for the purpose of discussion. Motion by Councilor Belfier, second by Councilor Bragg, and discussion with Council. Uh, uh, technically, the table is already moved and seconded, but uh, immaterial of that. Um, it was a basic question there, not necessarily aimed at uh, the individual being appointed, but the whole process of having somebody on a board that also sits on the board that hears the appeal from that board. And uh, it had come up a couple of times a couple of weeks ago. Somebody asked me about it, and I said, I'm not sure what the status of that is because I knew it had been talked about before, but I would raise it. Have you uh, checked into? that uh, legality or that situation uh, did that put the town in any uh, difficult position? Uh, I do believe that the point that um, Mr. Angani made at our last meeting was very valid. Um, in, in, in the conflict of interest area um, and then, you know, through the internal uh, you know, look into that from uh, you know myself and our town clerk. Um, you know, procedurally, the, the planning board needed to bring anything at all to the board of appeals. Um, that individual would have to abstain from the vote, leaving four votes on the table. There's no tiebreaker. Doesn't make sense logistically that way. And uh, I think conflict of interest aside. Um, in all fairness, it doesn't allow for uh, a majority vote um, if that person has to uh, excuse themselves from that vote each time. So I, I would, you know, I would recommend that um, seek another candidate for that position. Mr. Chairman, if um, any other council would like to speak, I'd like to hear their comments. Other than that, I, I think we should stop um, the open council on the door. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, it, it's, it has nothing really to do with the individual. It has to do with the fact that uh, being on the planning board, if the planning board renders a decision that is appealed, that person then being on the appeals board would have to recuse themselves from any type of uh, discussion or, or vote moving forward. And the chairman is, as a manager, I'm sorry, is right in the fact that that would create a deadlock as far as a uh, could be a two two tie uh, without that fifth vote. So it has nothing to do with the, I want to make it very clear that it has nothing to do with the, the qualifications or whatever of the candidate. What it does have to do is this has been an oversight because we we appreciate when people volunteer for, for boards and committees. We encourage it. But in this case, it is a conflict that has gone unaddressed up until now, but needs to be taken care of. And I, I agree that another, we need to go ahead and repost this for another candidate uh, for the position. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman Dora. Councilman Danforth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, what I'm understanding that Councilman Dora just said is the oversight is on this committee and the planning board, both currently. Um, so, it seems like you would have a choice today. I think I'm in favor of where you're going as far as you know, not putting them forward today, but if you chose to get off the planning board and reapply for this. It wouldn't be an issue. You just have to 
decide one or the other. Yeah, so just to clarify, he is applying for this additional board position. He's only on the planning board currently. Wording of this is we're going to reappoint. Is that not right? A reappointment. A reappointment, excuse me. Yes, Councilor Brad. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, just clarification on the overall thing of it. You still could have a three to one vote of the other person. You could have uh, uh, four to zero vote. You could have a variety of But I, I'm afraid in the past, without us really having brought this up, there could have been a situation where they could have voted on both. And there could have been a potential liability for the town of, of not having given the person that appealed the decision. And obviously, now that it's been brought to the attention, I don't think we'll fall into that, or at least as long as some of you remain on the council and can tell future uh, appointees that when this type of stuff comes up, uh, it doesn't cap well. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's the right thing to do is reach out and see if we can't find more people in the community that can take one of these. I do agree that it. it Obviously, it's up to uh, Mr. Trimmy as to which one you prefer. I believe, I think, I'm not going to speak from, but I think you probably prefer the uh, planning board. But uh, having said that, uh, um, I think it's a question of the time, the town doing it appropriately when the issue is raised to us. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Brown. Any other council comments? Seeing none, that was the public. Also seeing on the back of the council, all those in favor, Councilor Sprouts here? Yes. Councilor Braggin? Nay. Councilor Prey? Nay. Councilor Danforth? Nay. Councilor McEwen? Nay. Chair Bullion, nay. And Councilor Dorf? Nay. The order passes, or the order fails 0 7. And Councilor Dorf, if I could have to read order number 40, 2022, please. Mr. Chairman, I would. Uh... Mr. Chairman, I would uh, like to make a motion that order number 40-2022 uh, remain on the table. Second. Motion by Councilor Doris, seconded by Councilor Prey. All those in favor, Councilor Prey? Aye. Councilor Danforth? Aye. Councilor McEwen? Aye. Chair Gillian? Aye. Councilor Medor? Aye. Councilor Belchier? Aye. Councilor Bracken? Aye. The order remains stable. And with that, we go into new business. Councilor Bragg, if I could have a read order number 42, 2022, please. Order number 42 2022, providing for execution of the town warrants for March 24th, 2022. It is ordered that the town warrants for March 24th, 2022, in the amount of $242,452.40 something to your body first. Second. Motion by Councilor Bragg, second by Councilor Clay. Discussion of the council, heavy hitter. Uh, $18,009.50 to the Milwaukee Memorial Library for the agreement, $9,313.91 to the Municipal Review Committee, $181,840.18 to the County of East Milwaukee for police services, $9,502.67 to Versus Power. Thank you, Councilor Dragon. Any other council comment? Seeing none, out of the public. Yes, please. Just ask the question, Sandra Sullivan, one on Fort Sunset. Um, the amount going to the police department, is this an increased amount to cover um, the two additional police officers that are assigned to Melbourne? Has that taken effect yet, Mr. Manager? I believe it has. Yes. Okay, so. Yep, it, that's a new invoice. It will not go up from this then as far as additional coverage because I did read the report that said the police uh, staff, uh, the police, East Milwaukee Police Department is fully staffed. And so we should be, from now on, uh, the same amount of money. Um, at the very least for the remainder of this contract, we do have to renegotiate that contract in the future. Uh, but for now, yes, you understand that correctly. Well, I know that not too long ago, the contract was increased from, I believe a year to an additional three years. So is that what you're talking about? Uh, um, 
Yes. So it will be like another three years from now before they can increase what we pay for police protection. Or at least until we renegotiate the contract. But yeah. that should be another three years, is that correct? Roughly. Okay. Thank it, you. it all remains going very well, yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm not sure that that's totally correct. Uh, we're not locked in because they're obviously inflation, the price of gasoline, vehicles, all those types of things. They come up each budget year. We are we are taking we are, this this allocation here. Uh, I believe is for the last quarter. So the question is, do they remain fully? Uh, uh, up to full staff to the end of the year. I, I believe there's one officer leaving before the end of the year. So unless they find a replacement, we'll drop down that one officer. But as we do the budget going forward and the, their department brings in what their increases are going to be, we'll have to account for that in our budget negotiations when we talk about potential expenses to us. So your, your question to this, this dollar amount here is based upon being fully staffed. To the agreement that we made originally based upon us having the number of officers that were agreed to and then we need to add one officer to it uh, after that has started so that's the dollar per cost but i'm per assuming that this dollar amount is not just staffing that this also includes the fuel and the, the car replacements and what the uniforms and whatever when you pay them, you don't pay them $181,000 this quarter and then get enough just for staff and then get another bill for fuel and are not incidentals because it's certainly not incidentals, but I mean, the other things that go along with running the police department. I understand what you're asking, and I think it's probably wise for us to answer you at the next meeting to, to, to have it. My perception of it, I'm not sure, is the same as the full council and my expectation of those costs. If we lose one of our vehicles, I assume that that was our cost to replace that vehicle. Because yeah. those vehicles come back to us at the end of the contract, if those vehicles have 100,000, 200,000 miles on them, they're ours. But if we wanted the vehicle to replace it, it's going to be an expense to the town, like it would be if we had a police department ourselves. Okay. Yes. I, I think I understood when we went with this arrangement that it was all encompassing that we, that all of these other the, the maintenance for the cars and everything would not come back to us. Obviously, I was wrong. So. Yeah, my understanding of the way it was structured when it was put together is there was a total dollar amount for the whole year that encompasses all the costs. And I believe there is a capital expense budget in that cost. And that annual cost is broken out quarterly. So we pay the same amount quarterly. It changed because we had two additional officers added. Right. So if that's the increase you're referring to, then yes, that would be paid quarterly. Okay. That's what the increase is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we do receive the, the vehicles at the expiration of the contract. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? There's one public comment. It's nice to be able to see the citizen speak by Susan Gale, Sandra. Thank you. Seeing no other public comment, back to the council. I realize we're all in person, so I'm just going to do a hand raise. All those in favor? All those? Passes 7-0. Uh, Councilor Bragdon, if I could have read order number 43, 2022, please. Order number 43 2022, providing for execution of the wastewater warrant for March 24th, 2022. It is ordered that the wastewater warrant for March 24th, 2022, in the amount of $11,917.04 is hereby approved. Second. Motion by Council Bragg, seconded by Council Door. Discussion of the Council, heavy hitters on that? $8,475.56 to Versa and Power, and $1,000 to Town of Milwaukee. Thank you, Council Bragg. Any other Council comment? 
Seeing none, that is the public. Also seeing none, back to council, all those in favor? Passes seven zero. Oh, I don't think it's going <laughs> Councilor Bell's here. If I could have you read order number 44, 2022, please. Certainly. Order number 44, 2022, providing for approval of an application for a DYO permit. It is ordered that the attached application for a DYO will be malt, minuous, and spiritless liquor permit is hereby approved for Erica L. Mackin, 189 Lincoln Street, Mellon Office, doing business as the Shirley House, B and D. Trivia night at the Shirley, 193 Central Street, no office. No, the Shirley House DMD. And these entertainment and liquor licenses valid until April 31st, 2022. Second. Motion by Councilor Bell Spears, second by Councilor Bragg, discussion of the council. Seeing none, now the public. Also seeing none, back to the council, all in favor? Passes 7 0. Council Medora, if I could have read order number 45, 2022, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Order number 45 2022, providing for the approval of an application for an appointment to the Board of Appeals. It is ordered the Millinock Town Council approves the appointment of Richard A. Gotti to the Board of Appeals for a three year term to expire March 2025. Note, Richard's application was received on March 11, 2022, and was the second application placed on file. Three seats are now expired. Three seats are now expired March 31st, 2022. Motion by Councilor Medora, second by Councilor Dragon. Discussion of the Council. Thank you for that clarification. Any Council comment? Council Hanford? I just have a question. Did this bring it up to? Um, the amount we need on the committee, or there's still the board is currently full until the end of this month. So they are anticipating for this week. So are you aware the other people are oh nobody's applied, nobody's reapplied for their seats, so they'll be three seats. Correct. So well, there's another order at the end of, of this agenda um, with Charlie's uh, failing order that does leave that to the Thank you, Council Dashboard. Thank you, Diana. Any other council comments? Seeing none, that is public. Certainly in the chat there, Matt. I'm looking right now. Erica Mackin commented on the last post. She said, I wasn't fast enough for the public comment. Thank you so much for the approval. Looking forward to this event and hopefully many more. We have a lot of fun night out in Thank you, Erica. Seeing no other public comment, back to the council. All those in favor? Pass the 7 0. Councilor McCune, if I could add read order number 46, 2022, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, order number 46 2022. Providing for approval of reappointment of county officers. It is ordered that the Milwaukee County Council, Council approve the reappointment of Thomas Malcolm as health officer for the three year term to expire in March 2025. Second. Motion by Council McEwen, second by Council Danford. Discussion of the Council. Council Craig. Can I note there's no reference to the experience? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Council Craig. Any other Council comments? Seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the council, all in favor? Council 7 0. Council Danforth, if I could add read order number 47, 2022, please. Yes, order number 47 2022, providing for authorization for advertising the airport RFP. It is ordered that the town manager be authorized to advertise the attached RFP for A and E services for a new airport terminal building. Second. Motion by Council Danforth, second by Council Medour. Discussion of the Council. I will just point out uh, that this uh, supplemental material attached to the order um, is according to the new policies that we adopted a couple meetings ago. Uh, there's a cover page on it with the information needed and uh, suggested order and 
all the other information. I hope you all have a chance to look at that. Um, also very excited about this uh, opportunity. Just to let the public know, this uh, RFP is for the engineering plans and building plans for a new terminal building for the airport. We've been working on this for well over a year now. Um, we got funding from uh, the Northern Borders Regional Commission uh, to pay for 80% of this project. That's estimated to be around 250 something thousand dollars. Um, the town's portion is 20%. We're looking for uh, funds to cover that. Uh, one of the potential opportunities of covering those funds are to uh, harvest uh, some of the trees surrounding the airport land. We have over 100 acres um, that would be uh, basically right for the harvest. So uh, ideally, we can use those funds to cover the 20% match. But uh, this specifically is putting out an RFP to see what um, architects and engineers would charge. And uh, we can always, as a council, uh, choose to refuse it or accept it. Um, this also does not commit us to any project. It just puts it out there to see uh, who would offer the service and for how much. Any other council comments? I guess I said it all. That is the public. Also seeing none, back to the council, all in favor? Council 7-0. And Council Prey, if I could have a review order number 48, 2022, please. Uh, I'll go over there. Uh, <laughs> uh, order number 42 2022, providing 48. 48, 2022, providing for establishment of banking and investment services, whereas the town desires to establish a brokerage account with Wells Fargo advises for the Stern High School Sarah James Thompson Memorial Scholarship Fund. And whereas the town treasurer in charge of the is charged with the responsibility of investing all municipal funds for all departments of the town, including reserve funds and trust funds as required by main law, the chapter and the administrative code, and whereas deputy treasurer acts in the absence of or at the direction of the treasurer. Now therefore be ordered that one, the treasurer is authorized to open one or more brokerage accounts at Wells Fargo Advisors for the Stearns High School. Sarah Jane Thompson Memorial Scholarship Fund. Two, the treasurer and deputy treasurer shall be the persons authorized to make deposits, investments, and withdrawals from the account authorized by this order and to maintain the account with this institution. A, the treasurer with the consent of the town manager and the advice of the town attorney is authorized to negotiate the terms and conditions of the required agreement with the Wells Fargo advisors and to execute the final agreement on behalf of the town or otherwise complete, complete the forms such as the non-corporate agreement form. Three, the treasurer and deputy treasurer are authorized to A, complete and sign signature cards for each account open under the authority of this order. B, complete the associated, the associated personal information form. Four, the deputy town clerk is directed to execute the certification portion of the completed non corporate agreement form. Five, the authority granted to the treasurer and deputy treasurer by this order is granted to the individual appointed to set position, but is intended to apply in the future when different individuals are, when different individuals are appointed to those positions and Wells Fargo advisors may continue to rely upon this order, even though different individuals hold the position of treasurer or deputy treasurer from the time. From time to time. Six, it is also required that a scholarship investment committee and investment procedure is presented to the town council. Seven, the treasurer also has the authority to use Wells Fargo advisors for other scholarship funds when required. So, okay. Motion by Councilor Bray, seconded by Councilor Moore, discussion with Council. Seeing none, that on public. Also seeing none, back to the council, all those in favor? Order passes 7 0. Council tells here if I could add read order number 49 2022, please. Order number 49 2022, providing for appointment. 
to the Records Advisory Committee. There's a little bit of the town council who would be appointed to be in charge of the Records Recreation Advisory Committee for a three year term of the fire mine 2025. No, the end application was received on March 22nd, 2022, and it's the only application placed on file. Second. Motion by Council Gossier, second by Council Medor. Discussion of the Council? Seeing none, Madam Public. All from seeing none, back to the Council. All those in favor? Passes 10 0. And Council Medor, if I could have read order number 50, 2022, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Order number 50 2022, providing for the approval of an application for reappointment to the Board of Appeals. It is ordered that the Millinocket Town Council approves the reappointment of Terrence Levitt to the Board of Appeals for a three year term to expire in March 2025. Note Terrence's application was received on March 24, 2022, and was the third application placed on file. Three seats are to expire. March 31st, 2022. Second. Motion by Council Medora, seconded by Councilor Bragdon. Discussion with the Council? Seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the Council. All those in favor? Pass the 7 0. And with that, it brings us to reports and communications. The Warrant Committee for the April 14th Council meeting will be Councilor Medora and the Chair. Thank you for that. Thank you both. Any chair committee reports? Uh, just a reminder of the sustainability committee meeting, which I've probably referenced three times already. <laughs> and uh, seeing no other chair committee reports, I will go to the two minute public comment if anyone from the public has a comment. All right, seeing none, back to the council here. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Council Medora, second by Council Bracken. All those in favor? Pass 7 0. We're adjourned. You didn't raise your hand? Thank you, Louie. All those opposed? Behind the screen. All right. Okay. You're opposed as well? All right. We're adjourned 6 1.